All right, welcome to another Railway Empire video. This is Atticon, and we're going to continue our fundamental series, and we're going to look at some basic concepts that I think people overlook. And you, you, some of these you'll know for sure. Some of them you may have an idea, and some of them you may not know at all, and you really should because I'm, you know, when I read the comments and people ask me questions about, well, this didn't happen or that didn't happen, a lot of times it comes back to the things we're going to cover here. We're going to talk about supply and demand in its most basic forms and the way the game interprets that and, and presents it to us. And we're going to talk about storage, and I'm not talking about a warehouse now. We're talking about the storage within a city and the storage at a farm and at a station and how those things interplay with one another and why certain goods will ship and why certain goods will not ship. So we're going to use sandbox mode for this. And I've kind of checked it out already to make sure it's not going to give us any false data. It doesn't really account for expenses in sandbox, but that doesn't matter. This, this video is not about making money. It's not about strategy or mechanics or laying track or any of that stuff. It's about the basics of supply and demand and why goods move and why they don't, okay? So let's just go into our favorite spot here. And this is truly, it doesn't matter which uh, character we use, they'll all behave similarly. They'll all behave really the same for all the things we're gonna cover. So the first thing I wanna do after our buddy stops talking. What I want to do is look at the cities without any connections. So let's look, take a look at Toledo. If we look at Toledo, one thing, um, you know, of course, you know how to read the, the, the uh, supply and demand from the, from the city, I would hope. And let's just go over that quickly. This column right here, the second column, is the weekly demand in that city. So you can see that Toledo is big enough. It's at like 45,000 people that it's demanding a little bit of um, veggies. This is per week, 0.4 per week. And it gets up to, and this is why I always say these first ones are so important because they are always roughly twice all the other ones. So when you see a city that's developed, you'll see something like 1.8 up here for most of these, and you'll see kind of ones down here for all the other stuff that it might need. So these first ones, the fundamental ones that you grow your city with from the beginning, continue to be important all the way through. So at any rate, now, so you can see here in Toledo, we've got a 0.9 for all of these. And in Toledo, you can tell it has a meat factory in it because the, uh, it has the demand for cattle of 3.6 a week. So it needs 3.6 box cars of cattle every week to keep it happy. Now this column over here is what does it have in the city? So of course you're going to look at this and, and uh, figure out what do you need. So you might see a city, Toledo gets pretty well supplied just by overland because if we look at, if we look at our handy dandy tool for overland, you can see they're getting good wheat supply. They're actually getting decent uh, cattle supply over land. They're not getting any corn. The corn is too far away and it's all going over to Pittsburgh. They are getting some wood. They're, of course, getting meat because um, they can take the cattle and turn it into meat. So they're feeding themselves, so to speak. And beer, they're actually getting some beer over land from Grand Rapids. So that's why, and cotton they have no use for at this point. So that's why you see Toledo actually uh, getting some pretty decent satisfaction. It's actually on the 60%. So it's on, just on the cusp of, of growing. So it just needs us to give it a little push and it'll start growing. If we go up to Grand Rapids and take a quick look, um, we'll see that it doesn't need nearly as many things because it's a much smaller city to start with. It's under 30,000. So the, these goods down here are not needed. But you can see it's got plenty of beer because it's getting some wheat. It's, uh, right now it's, it's at zero, but it, it gets a little bit of wheat and it uses it up quickly. And then they, uh, they, everybody, I guess everybody stays drunk in Grand Rapids. So they're getting a little wood, but that, that's about it. They're getting a little, um, a little uh, few logs, that's it. But oh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about was this. If you'll notice this, the, the brewery is a level one brewery. And this right here, this 13 slash 14, that means that it has in its warehouse, in its storage, 13 um, boxcars of, or units, let's just call them units, 13 units of beer 
that are available to be exported out of a total capacity of 14. And that total capacity matters as well. We'll come to that later. But so it could send out 13 beer. And if we look at Toledo, it has 18 meat out of 19. Now that's because Toledo is a bigger city than Grand Rapids. So it has larger storage capacity for storing this stuff uh, in order to have it ready to, to export. So it has 18 out of 19 potential beer and Grand Rapids... Where's Grand Rapids? Oh, it's not worth, let me do that. So Grand Rapids has 13 out of 14 because it's a smaller city. But that's what I'm talking about when we talk about the honeymoon period. If we were to set up a line between these two cities, we would immediately see a meat going up to Grand Rapids. Uh, probably a train load of meat would go to Grand Rapids. A train load of beer would go down to Toledo because they have it ready to export, even though no other lines have been set up. So that's why you get, so that's another one of those reasons why it's so important to find beer and meat. So you get that immediate hit of, good, of goods being passed back and forth. But if we were to look at, say, Toledo and Indianapolis, now Toledo has meat and it has leather, which it also creates from the cattle that it gets. Leather is not needed by anybody yet. It's, it's down the road. You have to be a pretty big city to need leather. Over here in Indianapolis, well, look at this. They have 18 uh, meat as well. And you know what? I take back what I said, that 18 out of 19 is because of meat storage. Meat storage has more capacity than beer storage. Sorry. So so you've got, you've got meat and meat here. So if we set up a line between uh, Indianapolis and Toledo, all we would see our passengers and mail moving back and forth. We would not get any goods shipment whatsoever because there's nothing needed in Toledo that they produce in Indianapolis. There's nothing needed in Indianapolis that they produce in Toledo. But again, if we were to turn Indianapolis around and hook it up with the beer and have our famous beer meat line, then we'd see goods flowing back and forth. Down here, same deal. You'd have meat to meat, no, no go, no go. Meat to meat. Meat here, meat in Buffalo. So that's why this particular map Grand Rapids, in this arrangement, Grand Rapids is the key city because it, you could actually run lines between it and every city, build yourself a big old brewery, buy that brewery and start shipping it out and, and connect up your uh, wheat and make a fortune. But anyway, I'm sorry, getting off topic. That's not what we're here to talk about. So we've got our storage set up. We've got our storage defined. In fact, let's just make sure Let's get this right. I'm going to bump, I'm going to buy this guy and I'm going to bump him up. Okay, so we bumped him up a level. He's now level two. Now, did you see what happened? The level two meat storage, now he's up to 33 potential that he could store because his industry is bigger and he has a bigger warehouse for storage of goods that could be exported. Okay. And we could do the same thing with our, our beer. It's at 14. Now, if we buy it and bump it up one, now there, it jumped up to 24. So now he's going ahead and making some more. And you also notice he wasn't making any, and now he's making more because he's bigger and he has more capacity for putting that in. And he also has... He has, uh, has some uh, uh, wheat coming in over land. So he's taking that wheat and turning it into more beer to be exported. And his capacity for storage in his city is going up. That went up because he, he got bigger. Now, if we take him up another notch. Whoops. Now, that was interesting. Oh, wait, did I do that wrong? Sorry, hit the wrong button. I actually took him down. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> okay, that's another one to talk about. The city is not, can only a city can only support a certain uh, set. Once you have to get twenty thousand to be able to support a two, I think it's forty thousand for three, sixty thousand for level four and beyond so and i'm not exactly sure about those don't quote me on those but the idea is your city has to be big enough to provide the infrastructure to allow the cities these uh goods to expand and if you want to see that in action watch the um video i just two videos i just put out 
on the cattle drive and how I'm constantly trying to grow the cities that these meat industries are in because I want to expand the meat industries. And I've got plenty of money to do it, but I can't expand the meat industries until the city grows. So the city size and the capacity of your industries are tied together. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, if we just stepped out here and looked at, at Grand Rapids, it's not a very big place. And if we have our, our brewery down here, whoops, we have our brewery down here, there's not enough people and capacity and other infrastructure in the town to support a bigger business. So that's why you have kind of that limit. It makes perfect sense. And so you got to grow your town to uh, be able to bump up your industry. And that's why uh, back to if the, we were going to do that beer-centered run and, and grow a beer industry here and then ship it out to a bunch of places, we would have to grow Grand Rapids at the same time and ship other things into Grand Rapids so that it would grow because the more it grows, the bigger we can make our industry. Okay, so I hope that's all making sense. I hope this isn't boring you to tears. And see here is a 23 out of 24. And if we downgrade him back to his original size, now he's got 21 made, but he can only has room for 14. There'll be I don't I don't even know what happens to these. I think they sit there, but he's got an overstuffed uh, capacity, and he will just shut down. He will quit. Um, his utilization will drop down even if he's getting wheat. He's going to stop making the wheat because uh, except for what uh, the town is consuming itself, which is about one, whoops, sorry, uh, beer, a 0.4. It's only consuming 0.4 a week. So um, he's, his uh, utilization, which is this chart over here, is going to start dropping because he has too much made. He actually made it based on his level two capacity, and now he's dropped back to level one. All right, so I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit. All right, so that kind of tells you about the storage inside the city and how you can figure out what you can export. Now, how do you use that? I, I, I'll tell you the simple one is <laughs> build meat and beer lines, okay? There you go, duh. Build meat and beer lines and just keep doing that. Keep building meat and beer as we've uh, said all along. And uh, th this will take care of itself. But it does kind of show you that honeymoon period where you have those extra ones and you get that in those initial shipments. And that's also why in our rapid expansion strategy, phase one is rapid expansion. Phase two is start feeding cattle into the, into the meat and start feeding wheat into the beer because we want those to keep going. We want them to keep building and keep providing goods that can be passed back and forth. Okay, now back to kind of what I was really wanting to, to do with all this. So let's just set up. Um, oh, let's let's <laughs> shoot. Let's do our usual. Let's let's set up a station here and a station here and run a line between them. Why not? How many times have I done this? Okay. How close to the 140? Oh, I got a little long this time because he's turned sideways. We added five miles to our trip. We usually get 140. All right, so let's just run a little old point to point. Doesn't matter. We'll run our little point to point. and we'll run four trains back and forth between these two on automatic. And we will see, and let's just jump right up to the Dragon, right off the bat. And see there's that beer being loaded, and down here we're gonna see meat being loaded. And there it goes. So we're gonna have beer and meat coming back, and there should be another shipment of it. Let's just see if we can get some more. If I can, oh, you know what? <laughs> They're not going anywhere. Okay, and let's see if we get more beer. 
And sure enough, we do. And in Toledo, let's see if we get a little more meat. And we got some meat. Now, why didn't we get a full load? They had plenty here. It's because the city itself can only take so much. So it only needs 0.4. It doesn't need to store 16 or 18, uh, 16 box cars of, of uh, meat. It only needs so much. So, so the demand, so you may have supply here, but you have limited demand here. That's why our second train from Toledo to Grand Rapids only got the three meat, whereas the first one was fully loaded. Okay, so there's one concept. Number two, all right, simple one we've all seen. We're going to run wheat into into uh, Grand Rapids. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we run run your basic little little line out here to to this wheat farm. and we run a train to Grand Rapids. And what would we expect to happen? We would expect it to load up with wheat. And if I told it to go somewhere, that would be good. And go to Grand Rapids. So what's it doing? It's loading up with wheat and it's gonna to go to Grand Rapids. Ta-da! Okay, now let's go up here and run this veggie line. Let's run vegetables into Grand Rapids. So what will we expect to happen here? Well, if your answer was nothing, you got it right. Why not? Because we have plenty of supply there's, there's, there's veggies to be shipped, but Grand Rapids is not big enough to need veggies. It, it's got to get all the way to 45,000 before it will start demanding vegetables. Now, if we look here at our station, you'll notice this. These, these farms have a capacity, have their own storage. So these uh, raw material sites like farms and mines and quarries have storage as well. So a level one a veggie has a storage of nine, and it has nine available to be shipped. So that means if this guy had demand somewhere, he could grab a load of eight very quickly, immediately. He would be loaded up as fast as they could load him, and he would take off. So there's nine there. There will never be any more than nine until we upgrade that uh, farm. So we could, up, we could buy this thing and upgrade that farm, and his capacity stayed this oh no there it bumped up finally okay that's better so it bumped up to 14 he's got 10 available right now he said to, he could have a potential total of 14 but there's no place for it to go and it, and he's probably not even going to keep working he's probably just going to sit no, he is bumping up slowly bumping up so he's going up so he's but he's go up to a maximum of 14 but at the same time we still don't have demand we're not going to ship so you have to have both supply and demand in order to ship stuff okay and now, when Grand Rapids grows, when it's at 45,000, boom, there's going to be an order go out here and say, hey, we need vegetables, and this guy's going to, going to fill up and run down there and make a run. And then his runs are going to be governed by how quickly Grand Rapids consumes the vegetables. Okay? Now, the same thing if we were to set up, uh, well, here, let's do this. Just one more. And I'm beating a dead horse a little bit. I know you guys understand all this, but... Uh, I think there are people who do not. So for those of you who do not pay attention, those of you who do, just make sure I don't make a mistake. Okay. So we're going to run a cattle line to Grand Rapids. And for 
speed sake, I'm just going to single track it. And we're going to run a cattle line to Toledo out of that same spot. So let's first start with our Toledo line. So we're going to say go from the cattle ranch to Toledo and run full. And sure enough, he grabs cattle and takes off. Now let's run cattle, cattle to Grand Rapids. And we all know what's going to happen here, of course. Nothing, because no demand. So you have to have supply and demand. And if we look at our farm here, he's got a capacity of 19 that he can store. So notice that was a bigger capacity than the capacity over here. So they can, so they're all they're all not equal, I guess is the point. So he's got 15 ready. This guy doesn't need any. But what that says is this guy's going to come back and have an immediate load. Now, one of the things you could do to decide how many trains you wanted to run is you could look at this capacity. At, and let me let me double track this real fast. If we're going to talk about this, we'll double track it. Okay, so one of the things you could do is watch this guy and say, okay, I've got 16 available. I don't have a train back there yet, so why don't I, whoops, why don't I grab the right train? I'll make another train. So he's going to load. So he's loading up. And we can see he took he took some of it. We still have 19, but now we've got a train back there. So this is just one technique for bouncing this out. So you see he's so he's already taken out everything down to four. So he's gonna load up. Now he's gone. So what we can do, one technique you can use is just keep spawning trains. I'm going to make another train. You keep spawning trains until a train comes back here and is waiting. That would be a, 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 a reasonable technique for telling you how many trains that you need to match the capacity within that warehouse or, or within that uh, uh, farm. And that farm is going to match the, the demand that it perceives, and the demand it perceives is cattle. We need 7.2 cattle a week. So he's going to, over time, this, this um, will level up to the point where he can um, match up with that uh, um, demand. And if you own this, you would want to level it up yourself even faster than, than a, a computer owner might do. Now, now you can see we've stripped him out. So now we've got plenty of trains running. We ended up with three. Now another way to, to look at your how many trains do I need. Uh, of course I'm getting a storm. <laughs> okay, so another way to look at, at how many trains you would need is to look at the distance. Uh, one, they're going to get in there every 25 days. Now to get 7.6, that's eight. I need I need one. I need a train to pull in there every week, every single week. So I need, what do I need? I need three or three and a half trains in order to pull in there every week. So why, why don't those two match? I would want to run three or four trains to match up with my demand down there. Remember, we bumped this up. I think it's a level, yeah, it's a level two meat industry. So he's needing, we're going to need three and a half trains based on looking at the duration of the route. 
And the reason that this guy doesn't match up is because, of course, he's not producing that quickly. So we're going to get a backup. But if we own this guy and we bumped it up, now we're making 4.8. And that, by the way, is still not enough. So now we have a, now what we want to have in our farm is a production. See how he's, he can store 62. He's got three right now. He's making 9.6 a week. We want that production to be equal to or greater than the demand that we're trying to meet. And the demand we're trying to meet is a little over seven. So this 9.6 would be where we would want this guy to go to maximize his profits. And see, he's making good profit. And also to maximize what we would need down here. And then if we looked at our technique of kind of looking at how much is in storage, Okay, he's at zero, and we've got a train in there. Let's see what happens when he fills up, because now we've bumped him up to a level three. That's a much, much more production, which means you need more trains in order to match that production. All right, I don't, well, we're getting some breakdowns. Ah, I'm going to put, and this is, again, this is where this maintenance thing drives me crazy. But anyway, let's put maintenance in Toledo, and let's put it in Grand Rapids, too. So at least we don't have to deal with that. So now we're looking at this and saying, okay, well, I look at this. I've got nine and I don't have a train grabbing it. So I could very definitely think about getting a train, but here comes one. So I'm in pretty good shape here. What am I running now? I'm running three trains. We calculated three and a half based on the, the duration of the trip. And now that we're getting an adequate, uh, we're getting a match of supply and demand between the, the farm and the city, uh, that three, three and a half, and, and I can tell you right now the way I would do it, I would always have, my three and a half would turn into four, okay? I would always have a, kind of and one to grow on. I would always figure out uh, my calculation. I usually do it with the, uh, the route length. I usually look at this number right here and you can see now the duration is 41 in reality, but that's because we just had a bunch of storms and stuff. So it, 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 that, that calculation varies all the time and it gets recalculated, but, but uh, you can get an idea when you first set them up from that initial estimate. And that initial estimate, by the way, is not taking into account heavy traffic uh, or, or well, storms, obviously it can't account for those either. But anyway, that's how you read what you have in terms of production storage capacity, how many you have available right now to ship, and see we have 20 available to ship and no train up there to take them. So we may still even be light, and we're running, we've got four? Yeah, we've got four trains, and four trains even that uh, with this level three going to a level two, and if we bump this one, this guy up, you know, as you bump these up, you've got to think about your total effect now, I'm going to bump, bump him up to level three. Look at all this he's got to export. Well, his problem is he's only got what he consumes in the city and Grand Rapids as consumers. He really needs, he needs another, another uh, city to ship to. And again, beer, meat, beer, meat. So we need to get him. And on a different map, this one would be tough. We would have to just send him off somewhere else. But on a different map, uh, we would think about uh, finding a, a, beer, a beer producer that Toledo could ship to. And then, the, of course, the other thing is on a, on a different map, we wouldn't have um, upgraded him to level three so quickly. There's no need for it when we've only got these two cities. All right. Hopefully that's all making sense. So this, this is how you read what you have to export. This, by the way, you click on this and this shows you, are you getting the raw materials you need for that industry? Is this we see this weaving factory is not getting anything. And you'll notice, you can read this like this. It, it, it's red here, so it doesn't have anything. It's white here, meaning, yeah, we'd like to produce this because we could use it and sell it, but we don't have the, the raw material. So let's give them the raw material and then see what happens. So let's run a line with our cotton. And let's run that into Toledo. Now let's give them their own station. If we can. And we've talked about this, uh, the difference between owning these um, industries and not owning them. It matters. Okay, so let's go over this way. 
once you own an industry now it could block you until you buy it you're you're cool you can put your um, stations in anywhere so one strategy you think about is put both stations in and expand them before you own industry but of course you can't you know you gotta your gameplay is going to vary your what your goals are going to vary when you need to buy things is going to vary but you do need to be cognizant of all this when you place industries when you do buy them or when you knock one down and build another one yeah, you got to pick the right spot to put them in okay so now we've got an industry the cotton industry and what did he say he needed he needed let's just leave him alone we won't upgrade him but the weaving needs 1.6 cotton a week all right so 1.6 cotton a week so let's see what we get if we want to run one full train what's it going to tell us it's given us 18 days so every 18 days this train is capable of going here and coming back which means it'll arrive every 18 days into Toledo so if we think about it like that that means that every two and a half weeks it's going to give us eight cotton well, we only need um, point or 1.6 a week so that one train really should keep us in theory it should keep us happy and keep this down now see what has happened he has raw material available that's you can see it going up because they're unloading from the see it's going up they're unloading from the train from the train that just uh, made the delivery he only needs 1.6 a week now he's happily producing this uh, these textiles he doesn't have any to export now why is that because He's burning it up himself probably right off the bat. So you can see here, by the way, weekly production. He's creating 9.6 meat and he's creating 1.6 um, textiles. Now he, and, and if you look at that, you can also, that's useful information too. Oh, sorry. If you look at this, the weekly production says he's producing 1.6. His weekly demands 0.6. So he's got an extra one that he could export. But the thing of it is, let's see if uh, Grand Rapids needs any. Grand Rapids actually does need some, so we will start seeing shipments. Uh, we should start seeing textiles going to Grand Rapids. Do we have any trains going to Grand Rapids? Okay, let's see what this guy takes back. Let's see if he grabs some textiles and takes them back to uh, Grand Rapids. He grabbed me. No, he did not. Now, why didn't he do that? He still has none for export. So he's consuming them as fast as he can make them. Can't swear that I'm totally understanding that. He's creating 1.6. Let's see if we can figure this out. Oh, he's stocking up his own city. So he's filling up his own stock because he knows that he's got a, a, a consumption of this. So he's basically stocking his own city. He hadn't made enough to, to actually export it yet. But he will. He will. And if we bump him up, of course... Now... What did I do? Okay. Now he's going to be start start making 3.2. And we, and we should. He's got a higher capacity. Now, there we go. Now we're starting to see some available for export. So one of the one of the things you can kind of do is say, if I'm if I'm trying to feed two cities, as a this doesn't exactly fit, but a, a general guideline, I need to be at a level two. So when you own these industries, if you're going to have a two-city cluster, be it at least a level two for all your industries that you own so that you can make enough to supply your city plus the other city that you're shipping to. 
If you're doing three cities, uh, you think about level three, of course. All right. So let's see. What other trouble can we get into? Um, ah, let's talk about one more thing. Let's go out here to our clay, which we know nobody needs. All right. So I'm, I'm going to assume we all agree that if I started a line of clay and shipped it to Toledo or Grand Rapids or Indianapolis or anywhere, it, nobody would need it and nobody would want it, correct? Well, let's do this. Let's put in a warehouse and let's run our clay to the warehouse and we'll see one other one thing that's interesting right away. So we've got a clay clay that we could ship to a warehouse. But if we look at our warehouse, clay is not an option. Now we know that clay eventually will be an option in the warehouse. Why isn't it an option? Because there are no cities that need clay. There's no product that needs to be made with clay anywhere on this map. So even if I set up a warehouse, I can't create artificial demand for it because I don't have a city big enough. Now, when Toledo gets a little bit bigger, see it's growing, let's give it a museum and let it really take off, my favorite building. Okay, so Toledo's growing, even though we're not, and, and look at this, by the way, we're giving it the cotton because of its industry, we're giving it the meat because of its industry, it's only picking up some other things by land, and yet it's growing. So, uh, you know, these a lot of these cities will grow even if we're not really doing much with them. So let's say this, let's say industry Y. And here's the other thing too, the industries, if we look at our industries, that's all that's available to us. There aren't even any industries uh, out there that, that could possibly use that clay. So there are no potteries or anything. So we're gonna to have to wait until one of our cities grows big enough to need it before we can put it anywhere. All right, so that's a special, that's a worth knowing too. If you had a, a requirement to produce uh, X automobiles, right, and you didn't have an automobile factory and you didn't have any cities that were like 115,000, guess what? You're not making any automobiles. So your first task is to grow a city big, a uh, pretty good size, so that you have demand, you can actually have the industry available to you. And now uh, the exception, you know, that one I said automobiles, that one, the automobile uh, uh, scenario, of course, they have that special warehouse in Toledo that creates the demand for that. And that's why a lot of these scenarios, they have these special warehouses. Black Gold has special warehouses that take in uh, oil. Um, uh, the automobile has the automobile warehouse in, in Toledo. The, the uh, one we just did, the cattle drive has the uh, uh, the meat warehouse where they ship uh, goods out uh, meat to the East Coast from Omaha. So that's what those are for. Um, what else could we cover here? I wanted to just talk about the supply and demand. And, and, and really the reason I brought this up is I've had people ask me, well, I, I can't get this to ship. Well, notice it's still not shipping. You know, nothing's going on. And we're still right here with our, we've got our nice little depot. It's completely full. It could, it could grab it if it wanted it. Now here, let's just talk about one other difference. We could ship that stuff to um, Toledo, right? Because Toledo is big enough to take vegetables. So now we do have the ability, if we wanted to, to create demand, so to speak, by saying, okay, this warehouse is going to take... Um, veggies and if we take this train and change his route to go to the warehouse now look what happens he starts loading immediately as soon as we changed his route and said go to a warehouse that will accept uh, veggies off he goes and he's going to run to that warehouse until he hits the number he's really going to go there twice and once he gets 16 and we've told him to run full he'll just sit there and wait until some way, somehow, the veggies get used in one of the cities. And by the way, there will be no overland uh, travel from this warehouse to Grand Rapids. It has to come by train. But Grand Rapids, actually, if it gets big enough, will start getting overland shipments of this. You can't cut it off completely with your, with your um, train. 
And notice here, here's getting me second load. Off he goes to the warehouse. All right, so that's just some kind of um, hopefully not too random thoughts about uh, supply and demand, how to read, how to read the screen, how to look at uh, what the industry is getting. Look at this, we've inundated this guy with uh, with cattle, so we are doing a great job supplying him. And he also has 61 units that he could export. So this would be a, a good opportunity to, to go out and, um, oh, we need to go find another place for him to go sell stuff. And that needs to be a place making beer. By the way, if you had this map and you were trying to build and you had limited space to build in, you would want to start buying some of these meat bin businesses and, and knocking them down and putting in breweries so that you could have uh, better lines to run. All right, so that's enough. Uh, so hopefully you got the idea about, uh, like I said, reading this, reading, reading this, reading the um, um, what's going on in your city and weekly demand, uh, understanding why sometimes things will ship and why sometimes they won't, understanding that the cities have to grow to certain sizes to get certain goods, uh, and understanding uh, you know why these trains, like I said, will run and won't run. Uh, how you can't artificially create the demand unless there's demand somewhere. If there is, if there was any city big enough to use a clay product, then this guy would start running. We would, with this line right here, would start working, and we'd be able to ship. Uh, we'd be able to say, okay, clay would be an option here. We would say, okay, ship us clay, and off it would go. What else is there to say? I think that's about it. Just to also do keep in mind this guy right here, this flow of goods that's telling you what's going on overland. So you can see right here, Toledo, for example, gets 71% of the wheat that it needs just from an overland route. And of course, we could uh, uh, hijack that, build our own line and, and do it by train and make profit on it. But as far as growing the city, it's getting, uh, it's getting uh, wheat. It's getting logs. So we said before, it's not getting corn. It is getting fruit. It's getting 100% of the fruit it needs. It's getting cotton now over land, or excuse me, or via our train, our one train. And our single train, how's it doing? See, it's keeping up very nicely. Well, ooh, ooh, ooh. We did have a dip here, but now that dip could have occurred because we didn't have any storage, but I don't think so. I think we had, I think our one train, it, maybe a breakdown could have gotten in there. These things could stop, and that's the other reason I like to have that one to grow on. So we're gonna run a second cotton train to make sure that we have enough cotton. So I, my, my rule is basically calculate what I think it'll take and add one, because you're gonna have growth and you're gonna have problems. And so now by having that extra train, we can, we can keep him supplied. All right, I hope that wasn't too random, wasn't too much just babbling, but I do think those are important concepts to understand. And if you get those down, you'll, you'll, uh, it'll make understanding, you know, what's going on with these train loading messages. And one last comment, if you've watched me play, if you've watched the videos I do where I'm playing through a scenario or a mission or whatever, if you looked carefully, you'll notice if you go around the edges of my screen, there are these little triangles everywhere because I will end up in situations where I've got, you know, maybe four trains running this line and I don't need anything for a while, so they're going to sit there and, and load slowly. Or my private owner hasn't boosted up the capacity of this farm fast enough to keep up with what's going on or how many I'm trying to ship, and I'll get this message. Generally speaking, see right there, I've got it in one now because we're actually keeping up. We've got all the wheat over there we need. Generally speaking, I don't care. I'm fine to have a whole bunch of those all around all around me. What it tell, what's really telling me is that I'm keeping everything as supplied as it can be. So again, I would rather err on the side of having one extra train, even though it runs up your costs a little bit. I always want to make sure I can supply those goods to the cities. All right, let's wrap it up there. I hope you found something useful in this. And I hope it wasn't too boring. You're still watching, so it must have been okay. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. And I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.